This movie is definitely getting some Oscar buzz. BAFTA, Entertainment Weekly, they both have it listed as a potential for Best Picture. Variety's got it listed on their 2024 predictions. It did win a Golden Globe for the Best Non-English Language Film, and then also Best Screenplay for a Film. This movie will definitely be prominent during the Oscar season. I personally gave it a 3.5 out of 5 on my letterbox. I enjoyed this film. The look of the film was great. The characters were really interesting. The use of the music is really great. Just having Daniel's piano play Playing, and then I think the song at the beginning being like the only prominent music throughout was really interesting. The interesting thing about this film, you actually get more out of it if you don't care who killed the father. Honestly, I was getting hung up on trying to figure out who did what or where were people at at a certain time. At the beginning of the movie, I was making all my predictions. I was treating it more like a Knives Out situation than what this film was meant to be. If you get caught up in that, you lose a good amount of depth with this film. The point of this movie was not to solve the crime, the point of the movie was to learn more about the characters. I really liked how all the characters were pretty flawed individuals. Maybe except for Daniel, but the mom, the one that you're almost set up to sympathize with the most and hope that she doesn't go to jail, is not the best person. She's cheated on her husband multiple times, she's lied about different interactions she had with her husband during the trial. What was really interesting though about the father was that you didn't actually get to meet him before he died. You didn't really have a certain image of him before he died, except for him playing his music very loudly when the student is interviewing Sandra. You do form somewhat of an opinion about the father in that moment, but nothing very concrete. Everything shown to us is how people people remembered him until the tape at the end when the whole conversation between the two is played. Even in that conversation though, both of them were kind of wrong and kind of right at the same time. There wasn't a clear, this is the person we choose to dislike in this situation. They were both equally unlikable in that scene, honestly, which I think made it great. Interesting thing about Daniel's character was that even though he wasn't unlikable in the way that his parents were, like cheating, lying, that kind of thing, his story still changes a bit near the beginning, like with the piece of tape. This movie just does a really good job at establishing that no one is really fully trustworthy. Even if they are intending to be 100% honest, even the most innocent character of the movie is still unreliable. A lot of the scenes were pretty long, but it didn't really feel like you were sitting in the same scene for probably like 5 minutes, maybe 10 minutes for some of the scenes. The courtroom scenes were pretty engaging, and those were probably like the longer scenes. I was aware that they were long while I was watching the scene, but it didn't really bother me. I was going to be absolutely shocked if the dog died. That would have come out of nowhere, and usually when I see a cute animal at the beginning of the movie, I'm always certain it's gonna die at the end. And if it doesn't die, the filmmakers typically know that you think the dog is gonna die, so they try and use that against you the entire movie. I didn't really get that sense in the beginning of the movie with this dog, so if they had killed the dog, I would have been out. I thought the relationship between Daniel and Sandra was really complex, and then also the relationship between Daniel and Marge. Marge almost becomes like a mother figure to Daniel throughout the film. The relationship between them, just based on how much time they spend together, that they have to spend together, they do end up becoming friends. It's like an unspoken friendship that they establish, which is a really cool payoff from the beginning of the film when Daniel makes it very clear that Marge is not his friend. So to see their relationship grow into a friendship and then into a relationship that Daniel will listen to Marge's advice. I think Marge's words of wisdom are ultimately what pushes Daniel to be confident when he talks to the judge and testifies. I really like that Daniel's piano playing skills were an indication of the passage of time. Some of the camera movement was really interesting. A lot of it looked like it was handheld, and there's some points when it looks like a camcorder zooming in. I had an old camcorder that you used to hold this switch down at the top, and it would zoom in very slowly, but like very distinctly to the camcorder, which I think is different to how zooming in is typically used in most movies that I watched. It almost made it look like a documentary of what was happening. It kind of took me out of the story though. When that happened, it felt like there was a person there with a camera just filming everything that was happening, which I get is a style choice and it didn't bother me too much. It didn't like happen every shot so that was nice but something I did notice throughout the film. I will also say the fact that the majority of this movie was in French made it somewhat hard to follow. I do appreciate a film that does not shy away from using other languages and switching back and forth so I thought it was a really cool element. It did just make it somewhat hard to follow at points. This film has a 96% on Rotten Tomatoes. I would say that's a pretty accurate score in the grand scheme of things. My score is based off the fact that I don't not think this was a great film, but I just didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would. But it was still a good film, but not something I will be rushing to go watch again.